Chelsea boots are hard to design and make. The last has to be just right because the boot has to be snug around the heel, waist and the ankle but open enough to get your foot in. Unlike a taller cowboy boot whose tall shaft can keep your foot in, unless everything is just snug, you won't just get heel slip, the boot's going to fly off as soon as you try to run. Let's see how this has shaped up. G'day, how you going? My name is Tech and welcome to my channel, Bootlosophy. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands and waters that I live on, the Wajuk people of the Noongar Nation. Today, I'm taking another look at this pair of Fernando boots from new-ish bootmaker Christian Daniel. I've had them for oh, seven or eight months now, uh, and while it's true I haven't worn them every day, they have seen their fair share of use in my crazy rotation. I have to say though that most of the wear has been on carpet indoors, uh, whether at work or um, you know going out to friends and restaurants and the like. Watch this review with that in mind. This style is called a Chelsea boot, invented by Queen Victoria's bootmaker Joseph Sparks Hall and patented by him in 1851. Largely because of Queen Victoria, it became a fashionable riding boot in London amongst the rich Chelsea set who lived in the Royal Borough. But that isn't where they got their name though. For decades they were known only as elastic sided boots or gusset boots and it wasn't until the swinging 60s started in Chelsea and they were worn by pop groups such as the Beatles that they became a fashionable wear anywhere item and got to be known as Chelsea boots. Chelsea's are recognised for being laceless pull-on boots with elastic goring panels that allow the throat to be pulled open uh, to slip them on. The Fernando is, is a lower Chelsea boot. It's only five inches in the shaft on the top of the heel, uh, where, for example, the RM Williams uh, are over five inches, nearly six, and others even more. Uh, that leads to a dressier line, but also an issue with the pull loop, which I'll talk about later. Now, this is a chunky, casual Chelsea, not a dressy one, despite the smooth, full-grain black uppers. It has a contrast colour storm welt, and the outsole is a thick Dr. Sole half sole. Before I go on with the construction, let me talk a little about the brand Christian Daniel. It's a new brand, uh, based in San Diego, California, started in, uh, I think, 2021 or 2022, uh, when the founder, Christian Ramos, started looking at making boots. He launched his Kickstarter campaign in August 2022 with the Fernando boot available in this black leather or a reddish tan colour called maple. The Kickstarter campaign was successful and Christian started making the boots in a partner workshop in Leon, Mexico and then started shipping them in early 2023 uh, after some production setbacks. Not that Christian was unused to setbacks. He has had a troubled youth, but he pulled himself out of it. His focus has been the influence his father Daniel was in his life, especially his father's love of boots. There is a lot of boot making DNA in his family because his aunt made boots in Guadalajara in Mexico. After the Kickstarter campaign, Christian started the process of making the boots in Leon. Production was delayed because of uh, the delays in actually receiving his Dr. Sol outsoles being shipped up from Taiwan. These were the days just after the pandemic, don't forget, and boot brands like Parkhurst were finding it very difficult to obtain raw materials and even brands like Mark Albert went out of business. Nevertheless, the brand persevered and eventually they were made and shipped. As I record this, Kristen Daniels' second batch of boots is being made, uh, which I have ordered, of course, and they'll be expected before Christmas, I think. Okay, so now let's look at their construction. As usual, I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. At the bottom, as I said, there is a uh, rubber Dr. Sole Super Grip half sole and at the heel, a thick Dr. Sole matching top lift. The uh, boot bottoms are connected to the uppers using the Goodyear Welt construction method. Check out this video up there for a deep dive into what Goodyear Welt construction involves. Basically, 
A thin strip of leather called the welt is sewn on the inside to the insole and the uppers. On the outside, the welt is sewn through to the midsole and then the outsole. In this way, there are two stitches through the sole construction, and since neither go all the way from outside to inside, this is considered pretty water resistant. It is also recraftable, and the outsoles can be replaced when they wear out because you can just um, unpick or undo the separate outside stitch. Just going back to the outsole for a moment, it's six millimeters thick and is glued on the leather midsole, which is itself just under five millimeters thick before it's actually stitched. And then underneath the edge of the outsole, where it might lift, is also tacked with brass nails. The heel top lift is over 10 millimeters thick and it's glued onto a leather heel stack, which I think is also nailed down from the inside and the rubber top lift is nailed down as well. The welt, it's about uh, three and a half millimeters thick and it's a storm welt. A storm welt is where the leather welt is actually carved so that in the middle of it on the top face, there's a raised lip. As the welt is stitched to the uppers and the sole, the lip is pushed up against the uppers to create an additional water barrier. There are some issues with the construction of the welt in my boots. Uh, firstly, the lip of the storm welt is not fully pushed up against the uppers. There is a discernible gap between the lip and the uppers. There should be enough of the welt under the uppers, I think, and, and in time, the leather of the welt may actually swell, uh, but that's certainly a potential weak point for water resistance. Another issue is something that I don't really understand. On both my boots, on the inside or, or medial side of both, there seems to be two welt ends. If you think about it, a welt being a strip of leather going around the edge of the boot has a beginning and an end. So there should be a place where uh, they meet. The best boot makers will skive or they thin the ends and then join them uh, so that it, in the best boots you can hardly see where the joint is. On this pair, there seem to be uh, two parts on each boot where the welt ends and starts. It's almost as if the welt was cut deliberately short and then the gap extended. It is odd. Moving on up though, inside the boot is a leather insole. Uh, and on top of that, at the heel part, is a leather half liner to provide comfort on the heel as well as protect it from nail heads. The heel, I think, is uh, the counter is elastic, uh, and I think the toe puff is also elastic. Between the insole and the midsole in the cavity caused by the welt going around the edge of the boot is cork filling. Now this is expected in heritage built boots and welcomed when you put them on because of the comfort. Inserted in that cork layer is a steel shank placed between the heel and the ball of the foot, which provides arch support and stops this gap from collapsing. And it also gives you torsional stability over rough ground. Moving on up, the uppers are built around a last or a boot-shaped mole uh, that I think Christian designed himself. I think there's only one last and his new lace-up boots I think will also be built on the same last. Now this last is called the 11 slash 18 last in honor of his son's birthday, the 18th of November. So in the way Christian incorporated his father's name, Daniel, in the brand, he incorporated his son's birthday in the last. And indeed, Fernando is the name of Christian's good friend who passed away aged 29. You know, I really like these personal touches in a boot brand's journey. It makes it feel personal. The last is a good last for a Chelsea. It is snug in the heel and the instep, but broader in the forefoot. The uh, toe box is rounded, but ends in an almond-shaped toe. This allows the boot to stay snug on your foot, but gives comfort to wriggle your toes. As I said at the beginning, this type of fit is critical in the design of a Chelsea, and some people with very high volume insteps may not suit wearing this boot. The uppers leather now is from La Farc Tannery in Mexico, a very famous uh, Mexican tannery. This is their Albratos leather, which is chrome tanned and then mix retanned. It's a medium gloss full grain leather and while you can't see it in this dyed through black, does have a pull up effect in the lighter colours uh, because of the drum wax tumbling and the wax finishing. It feels soft and supple. 
Uh, the boot is fully uh, leather lined on the inside with a soft, thin leather. At the top of the shaft at the back is a single pull tab in the same leather. Because it's a slightly shorter than normal Chelsea, uh, and because it's a thick leather pull tab, it can be annoying because the back of your pants get caught on it all the time. You know, honestly, I, I much prefer cloth pull tabs. And I don't know, maybe these will eventually uh, break down and, and soften. As for how it has worn in the last few months, I can report improvements. I didn't feel as if I had to break them in when I first put them on. Uh, in fact, if you look at my unboxing and first impressions video uh, up here, you'll see that I said that I didn't think it needed much of a break in. Well, actually, <laughs> I was wrong. As comfortable as they felt straight out of the box, uh, I didn't realize until I'd worn them a couple of months that they actually did need some sort of breaking in. As I wore them, the uppers stretched enough that my feet didn't feel squeezed, uh, especially at the outside edge of my feet, uh, which they initially did. And the flexibility of the sole improved and made walking in them more comfortable. It wasn't exactly a hard break in, no, um, but whatever it was, it did improve comfort and fit after breaking in. One of the things that breaking in affected was the odd gait I felt when I first put them on. Uh, while the line of the heel to the ball was in a perfectly straight line, nevertheless, I felt as if my walk was in three parts. My heel landed, then I would bumpily transfer to the front of the heel, and then another bumpy transfer to kind of slap the ball of the foot down. I didn't roll. Well, the gait is good now. It rolls from heel to the ball to the toe in a smooth rolling action after break-in. I'm pretty sure that it wasn't caused by a misalignment of heel to ball, but rather by a stiff midsole which has softened. As that flexed uh, and in, in break-in, the roll really started to happen. Today, I've worn it regularly, but not frequently. I don't know, maybe one or 200 kilometers, say? Be that as it may, almost all of it would have been indoors. They are now pretty comfortable, and while they can still be a little uh, too snug at the ball of my right foot, I can wear them throughout the day without having to rip them off in the evening as you would if it was an uncomfortable boot. As for sizing, Christian Daniel recommends going true to your Brannock size, and I concur. My US Brannock size is 8.5 in D width. I usually buy US Heritage boots in 8D, but these are 8.5D, and, uh, and there is no way I could have sized down. The Christian Daniels site used to give a really good sizing guide because Christian listed uh, all the different brands of shoes, boots, and sneakers that he wore and what size he took in these so that you could compare uh, and make a comparison between uh, the other shoes and this one. I can't seem to find that information now, but he has partnered with uh, a boot sizing guide website called grail.com. That's G-R-A-Y-L-E.com. I've found caring for this Albratos leather really easy. Uh, brush to keep them clean, wipe them down if they've been in the rain and develop spots of dirt, uh, let them dry, and then condition them with Venetian shoe cream, maybe every three or four months depending on use. Because they're a mid-gloss, I don't bother with shoe cream to polish them. Uh, I find the waxy Venetian is good enough. But I have once given them a light coat of wax polish, uh, theoretically for protection, but really to no discernible effect one way or the other, so I, I really wouldn't bother. Because the leather midsole is exposed in the gap uh, between the heel and the forefoot, I'd make sure to condition it and then wax it along with waxing the welt uh, and the edges to try and retain waterproofness, if that's a word, waterproofness. Christian Daniel is now producing lace-up boots, so I don't know if he intends to bring back the Fernando. I got these from his Kickstarter campaign for US $360. His current lace-up boots, uh, on a group MTO which has closed now, were $475 US with Wicket and Craig leather. If the Fernando came back in this exact makeup, I suspect they'll be more like 360. Compare them with Grant Stone's uh, Chelsea boot at US 380. Uh, compare them with Parkhurst's Elmwood Chelsea at US 398. 
They're in the price range of comparable boots, of comparable brands, but the granite stone quality is well and above. I'd say that apart from the welt, the quality is very similar to Parkhurst. So value-wise, it's just about right. It's taken me a while to go from unboxing to first review. I usually do a review a couple of months after I get the boots and then a long-term review after a few more months uh, or even up to a year, but I forgot. <laughs> so consider this an early long-term review. If you like this review, let me remind you to help me out and click on the like button down there. And of course, if you haven't already, please click on subscribe. Until the next time, look after yourselves and I'll see you soon.